Here we will be discussing the general reactions of aldehydes and ketones. Collectively, we often see them in textbooks being called the carbonyl compounds. Okay, So again, carbonyl compounds include ketones. If my atom here is an R, or if it's an H, then it's an aldehyde. Okay, Obviously, they are called carbonyl compounds because they have the carbonyl group. But what's so special also with our two carbonyl compounds is that the other two bonds right here are relatively strong. Remember, a CC bond or a CH bond, because they share electrons pretty much equally, that means that they are strong and stable bonds. I'm saying that because I want you to remember that these two bonds are strong, that even after the reaction, these are not supposed to break. Okay? So, let's focus on the carbonyl for now and recognize the fact that, oh, we have an oxygen here, it's electronegative. It's going to pull electrons, it's going to be partially negative. And my carbon is going to be partially positive, making the carbonyl carbon electron poor and therefore it's electrophilic. That allows us to have a nucleophile attached to this electrophilic carbon. And there it goes. And now, we have a dilemma wherein the carbonyl carbon currently has 5 bonds. Now, of course, we need to make it 4 because that's the standard number. We need, to, we need to get rid of one of these 5. So remember what I told you a few seconds ago? You cannot get rid of these bonds. These are strong. So you have to resort to looking at the carbonyl group. Remember that a double bond is 1 sigma and 1 pi? And that the pi is weaker than the sigma? And I'm trying to say here that since the pi looks like the weakest link out of the bonds here, then it's one of the two bonds here that will have to go away. And that will go to our oxygen here. And following all of what I said, our product should look something like this. Wherein the double bond has been reduced to a single bond, and my oxygen now carries that negative charge. And I have this new bond which is actually a bond to the entering nucleophile. This is the final product. The negative charge will be dealt with accordingly later. So what happened? It's like you have A, this is entire A, this is B, you combine it, it became AB. Obviously, that is an addition reaction. And remember, your reagent is a nucleophile, so the specific mechanism for carbonyl compounds is nucleophilic, addition. So I will show you specific nucleophilic addition reactions below. I will just give you the arrow pushing for the first type but we will try to find a shortcut after and then we will use the shortcut for the next examples just to shorten the discussion time. So for example, let's say my reagent is water and the nucleophilic part is the oxygen, it's the electron rich part. And again, this carbonyl carbon is our target. So you can imagine this going to the, this one going to the carbon here. And then I mentioned a while ago, the pi bond will have to move here. So in that case, this oxygen will become negative and this will become a single bond. But in that case, if I have my oxygen having three bonds, this will be positive, right? And I have a negative, so they are complementary. So to further follow up on this, this negative charge can abstract this hydrogen here and the oxygen can get those electrons back. Yeah, a lot of things going on, right? So, long story short, when this oxygen gets this H, then it will become OH. And what will remain attached to the carbon is OH. So what's the shortcut? Well, the shortcut is just get one of the hydrogens from your original reagent attach it to the oxygen, the remainder should be attached to your carbonyl carbon. You're done. Okay. For example, if I have HEN, I get this H, I put this on the oxygen, the remainder I put on the carbon. Oh, sorry, it's supposed to be C. CN, right? CN. So the remainder, CN, put it on the carbonyl carbon. Same with this one put the H from the reagent on the O, and then the remainder, specifically the oxygen, on the carbonyl carbon. So it's it happens again and again and again. Oh, one more time. 
So if I have an amine, well, you don't have an oxygen, but you can assume that the electronegative atom is nitrogen, right? So you can say that one of the H's here, once again, move to the oxygen, that's predictable. And then the remainder, specifically from nitrogen, would attach to the carbon. So it's, it's, it's the same pattern again and again and again. So hopefully you see that there's a way to shortcut this. But of course, let's not forget to name what we made. So first, when I added water and we got this, what's the name of this? We usually call this a hydrate, but there's a more technical name to that. Remember, you have two OHs, so we call this a diol. But specifically, what type of diol? You have your diol, wherein your two OHs are attached to the same carbon, right? We had a name for this before, when we were discussing reactions of alkynes. Whenever I have something with two functional groups of the same carbon, we use the prefix, not really a prefix, the adjective geminal. So yeah, you can call your product here a hydrate or a geminal diol via addition of water to an aldehyde or ketone. But if I use HCN or hydrocyanic acid, I get this instead. This one is called a cyanohydrate. Cyano, referring to the cyanide group here, or the it's actually a nitrile group, and hydrine, referring to the OH here. If I use ROH, this was ROH a while ago, right? If I added an alcohol, I would get something like this. If I have a product wherein I have one carbon bearing one OH and one OR, it's called a hemi compound, hemi something. It depends. If I start with an aldehyde, this thing right here will be called a hemiacetal. But if I start with a ketone, what I have is called a hemiketal. Okay. Now, we can even go further and add a second molecule of alcohol. Note the color change. And what will happen is actually the... And let me clear this out just to use arrows to justify everything going on. Oh, I erased everything. So wait. Uh, it's supposed to have this, right? So what's going to happen if I add my second ROH is that the O will go here and it will force the OH out, okay? The H from the ROH will merge with this OH getting rid of water. And long story short, the uh, OH here will be an OR. And uh, the blue one, nothing happened here, so we're just going to copy this. So now you notice a while ago, in our hemi compound, we only have one OR. But in our product here, we have not just one, but two ORs. And this is now what we call a full-fledged acetal or a ketal. Okay? So that puts the word or the prefix hemi in perspective. Because if you think about it, hemi, hemi, what's hemi? It's like semi. It's like partial, right? It's like saying this is just a partial acetal or a partial ketal. And what's so partial with that? And I think if you put into perspective that when you say acetal, there must be two ORs, then maybe hemiacetal is just half of that. Or if ketal is two ORs, then hemiketal is half of that. So I think that gives justice to the prefix hemiacetal or hemiketal. Again, one alcohol, one mole of alcohol can afford you a hemiacetal or hemiketal, but two moles of alcohols can afford you a full acetal or a full ketal. One more, at least for this slide, if I use an amine like RNH2, okay, we can pr proceed first with this one. The name of this one is a carbinolamine, and hopefully you can guess the reason why. All, because of the OH, and amine because, of, of course, the amino group. But the carbinolamine is usually unstable, and so what happens is it tends to get rid of this OH and this H from NR, Okay. Oh, and I think you can already presume that when I get rid of this H here and this OH here, we will get rid of water. In exchange, what we will get is a double bond to the NR. Let's remain it. So it's like saying the bond here has been removed and transferred to the nitrogen so that the single bond nitrogen will now become a double bond nitrogen. And this is our more or less final product. A final product wherein you have a double bond to a nitrogen, a carbon double bonded to a nitrogen is called an amine.
and amines are usually the final stable products if I add an amine to an aldehyde or ketone. This is usually, take note, usually if my amine is a primary amine. If it were a secondary amine, it would be different, but that wouldn't be within the scope of, of what I want to discuss here. One last reaction that follows the pattern of nucleophilic addition is called the Grignard reaction. And in order to perform the Grignard reaction, you need to create what we call the Grignard reagent, which is symbolized using RMGX. You can create the Grignard reagent simply by combining an alkyl halide and magnesium. And in the lab, it's very easy to do as long as all your materials are dry. So Rx plus Mg yields RMGX. And long story short, okay, what we want to add from the RMGX is nothing more than just the R. Yeah, just the R. Meaning, once again, the double bond will become a single bond and from RMGX, we will just add the R. Take note that MGX is actually going to attach, really, but I'm skipping the arrows just to get to the point. So, that is not yet final. Usually, we need work around, or work, that's the wrong word. We need work up to finish the reaction, and we can use water or acid. I'm choosing acid because it's simpler to write H+. And that H+, will make your O here OH. That's usually your final product. And all I need to do is the same thing for all examples here. Add R to all my carbonyl carbons, add H to all my oxygens, and I'm done. So, what did we do really? What do you call the reactants and what do you call the products? Let's analyze first. What is this? So actually, it's an aldehyde, right? C double bond OH. In fact, it has two of those aldehyde groups. This is the aldehyde with only one carbon. Of course, using IUPAC name, you can call this methanol. But its common name is actually formaldehyde. And therefore, you can actually subject formaldehyde to bring a reaction to get you what? What's this? You have an OH, right? No other functional group, just OH. So this is an alcohol. But specifically, what type of alcohol is this? To know what type of alcohol you have, again, all you have to do is to look at the alpha carbon and count how many R's are beside it. I only see one, so we call this a primary alcohol. So that means that I can subject formaldehyde to green your reaction to give me a primary alcohol. Or maybe if I use other higher aldehydes, when we use the adjective higher for aldehydes, it's two carbons and above, okay, then I have one R here already. When I add RMGX, I'm just on top of the original R, adding another R. And so if you look at the product, the fact that it also has OH only, we have an alcohol, but since I have two R's around my alpha carbon, this is now a secondary alcohol. So hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here. And now, what if I have this, RCOR? We should know already by now, we call these a ketone. And same pattern, the double bond O will become an OH, so this is still an alcohol. And then from the Grignard reagent, this R will be added to this carbon. And since my alpha carbon now has three R's, then this is a tertiary alcohol. So you see the trend as you go down. The more R groups you have in your initial compound, then obviously the higher the type of alcohol you will have as a product of the Grignard reagent. One last note. So remember that I'm just going to write it in letters. If I have formaldehyde, I can use Grignard reagent to make it primary alcohol, right? I'm just copying this one. Or other higher aldehydes can be Grignard reacted to to form secondary alcohols, I just copied this. And then for ketones, I could Grignard reagent it or Grignard react it to give me a tertiary alcohol, which is this. Then remember before when we were studying redox, um, aldehydes and ketones can also be converted to alcohols, right? Like aldehydes can be reduced to primary alcohols. So let's write that here. Remember, aldehydes primary, okay? Aldehydes aldehydes can be reduced to primary alcohols and ketones can be reduced to secondary alcohols let me repeat ketones can be reduced to secondary alcohols 
So actually, if you want a more or less complete mnemonic of reactions to convert carbonyl compounds to different types of alcohols, there you go. Okay? And it really depends on what you want. But for sure, you have two reactions in your arsenal if you want to create an alcohol from an aldehyde or a ketone, Grignard or reduction. And it's up for you to decide which is the proper one to use depending on the context of the question given to you. So those are the reactions for aldehydes and ketones and what we have left to discuss are the carboxylic acids.